Hi everybody, welcome to my big tidy up. My name is Dee Dee. If this is your first time here, well, my channel is all about organizing, decluttering, cleaning, simple DIYs and decorating. And I'm glad you joined me today. Now today, what I have on the menu is cleaning. It's spring cleaning time. Now, before you go, oh no, another spring cleaning video. I don't wanna clean my baseboards. I know I need to clean the windows and clean my carpets, all of those things. That's not what I'm talking about today. Today are easy, small, little tasks, little spring cleaning jobs that sometimes we all forget. So it's not gonna be that backbreaking work where you're like, oh no, I'm on my hands and knees scrubbing the floor. Nope, not today. Today are simple little jobs that we all need to do that can make a big difference in our home. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's get that spring cleaning going and let's get this place tidy. going to start my spring cleaning with this area right here and that would be all of my light switches. I'll be cleaning all of my light switches throughout my home. You know this is kind of a forgotten area. We don't always get these and dirt definitely can build up. So I'm just going to use Clorox wipes and clean all of my switches and I also am going to get all of my lamp pulls because I know I'm handling those without cleaning them as well. Well, here is the aftermath of cleaning every light switch and every lamp knob and pull in my home. And here's a regular clean Clorox wipe so you could really see the difference and see how dirty these light switches were. Now the worst one was right by where I put on my makeup. I'm sure there was a lot of makeup on that light switch. Also the one in the garage and right over here by the garbage disposal. Those were the three dirtiest light switches. Next up, the remotes. Now, if your home is like our home, you probably have several remotes in different rooms, and it seems like everything nowadays is ran with a remote or some kind of touch screen. So I'm just gonna be gathering up all of my remotes, cleaning them, cleaning everything that's operated or controlled by a touch screen. But I am gonna to try to keep everything a little bit separate because I'm sure you're like me, you have a lot of remotes that look the same and I don't need to be getting them confused. So I'll just be doing them by location. I must admit, cleaning my thermostat 
is never on my mental radar. So that's why it works better for me if I group like chores together. So if I think to myself, everything that has a remote or everything that's ran with a touch screen and put those all together, I'm more likely to remember everything. One thing I do for spring cleaning is take my small appliances that I use the most and give them a good deep cleaning. And in our household, that's two coffee makers, a toaster, the can opener, and the blender. However, I won't be cleaning the blender today because let's just say I had a mishap with a protein shake and it was deep cleaned the other day. But I'll be doing my coffee makers first. And what I do for them is I take equal parts of vinegar and water and run it through a cycle. And when that cycle is done, I run two more cycles of clear water to make sure that I've got all of the residue out. So that takes care of cleaning the inside, and then I just do topical cleaning on the outside with an all-purpose cleaner and a brush. Now on the Keurig, since it's individual cups, what I will do is fill the reservoir with the vinegar and the water and run several cycles and several cups like that through the machine. Then I will empty it out with clear water and run several cups again with just the clear water to make sure all the residue and all the vinegar is gone. This was my second cup that I had run through, and you could see it still wasn't running clear. I was still getting residue out of the machine. So I ended up running about four cups through before it ran clear. The first thing I'll do is just give it a light spray of Dawn Power Wash and let it soak for a little bit. Then I'll come back, give it a light scrubbing, put it back in the water, let it soak again so I can come back and give it a thorough cleaning. But while it's soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the outside of the units so I can get the coffee pots done and move on to the toaster and can opener. If you're wondering if I'm using a toothbrush, I absolutely am using a toothbrush. I always like to keep a few on hand from the dollar store. I keep one in the kitchen for jobs just like this, and then I like to keep some up in the bathroom for when I'm cleaning my grout.
Now I knew the can opener would be a pretty quick clean. The toaster, not so much. My cleaning tools for this toaster today aren't real conventional. I'm using canned air, a fruit pick, a small piece of magic eraser, and then a rag and a multi-purpose cleaner. You know, I never do use a full magic eraser. I always just cut off a piece of it. That way the whole magic eraser doesn't get ruined and I can just throw it away after I'm done using it. After a quick dry, I'll put all the parts back together and my appliances will all be done and I'll be moving on to the next thing. Thing that might be easy to forget is about keeping your garbage disposal running smoothly and smelling sweetly. So I'm just going to share this one little hack. I shared it before probably about seven months ago, but in case you're new, you might not have seen it before. You're just going to take your garbage disposal, you're going to fill it and top it off with ice and run your water, and you will see that even if it looks clean, it's not really clean. It's going to pull everything up and it will eventually go down. And when it's all said and done, I add just a little bit of essential oil. Or if you have some citrus rind, you can throw that in there and it will keep your garbage disposal smelling sweet and running smoothly. I'm in the primary bathroom because I'm gonna work on cleaning my drains. Now what I use is not a product that you get off the shelf like a liquid plumber or a Drano. It's just a simple recipe hack that I've been using for quite some time. All it is is dish soap, baking soda, vinegar, and hot water a little bit later after you've put all those things in your sink. Now the thing about it is I've been doing this for quite some time and just the other day I saw on Instagram almost the exact same recipe. Someone was doing the exact same thing as me except just a couple little things were tweaked. So I'm going to try it both ways. I'm going to try it my original way and then I'm going to try their way and see if I can tell a difference. 
Now my way is one tablespoon of dish soap, a half a cup of baking soda, and two cups of vinegar. You pour it in the sink, you let it sit, you come back in 15 minutes and pour hot water down the drain, and voila, there you go. Now their recipe is the same. It is still one tablespoon of dish soap, a half a cup of baking soda, and two cups of vinegar. However, they pour it in and they said you throw a rag on top of it and you only let it set 10 minutes and then come back in and pour the hot water. So everything's the same except they've shortened the time by five minutes and they throw a rag on it. Now I'm not sure how that's gonna work because every time I've done it, it bubbles up and so it kind of fills the sink. So I guess I'm just gonna pour it and throw the rag on there and we'll see how it goes. But this is a great tip to keep your drains running smoothly. So let's get it going. Since I've been doing this for quite some time, I really truly believe that it does keep my drains running smooth and just a little bit faster and keeps my drains cleaned out. And I definitely know that it does give a good fresh smell and eliminates any bad odors when this process is done. Now my intention was to put the rag on this sink, but as you can see, it bubbled up really fast. So I think next time I'm gonna have to have the rag closer down after I pour the vinegar. So I'll try the rag over here on my husband's sink and I'll be ready right when I pour the vinegar. Now I'm gonna try the rag technique again, and I'm gonna do it downstairs in this little basement sink. And I'm thinking maybe since there's not a plug, maybe it will work a little better. I'm not quite sure what the benefit of the rag is. I was thinking that maybe if you put the rag on, it was to try to keep all the little cleaning goodies down in the drain and keep it more concentrated, but I'm not sure. So if you have ever done this with the rag, or know the benefit of that, or if you're that Instagram person that had this on there, please let me know because right now I'm just not getting it. Well, after completing my non-scientific experiment, I have come to the scientific conclusion that it makes absolutely no difference whether you use a rag or not. The only difference the rag has made is now I have laundry. One area of my home that gets forgotten and is definitely neglected and needs some spring cleaning are my doors. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but I have a lot of black right around the hinge area of my doors. Now I am gonna be cleaning all of my inside doors and the doors that segue to the outside as well. And this will be the toughest job I do. It's gonna be a little time consuming. But even if you don't get and clean your entire door, even just cleaning the hinge area where the black seems to build up and your door handles will really improve the look of your door. Every 
Now out of everything I cleaned today, this by far has been the dirtiest. This door that leads from the garage into the back of the house was absolutely filthy from top to bottom. And actually the lower it got, the worse it got. And I'm sure that's from carrying in bags or bringing in groceries and using my leg to open the door or push the door all the way open when my hands are full. I'm only halfway done and this is what my cleaning cloth looks like already. I think it's a good thing that cleaning the doors made the spring cleaning list. Now this last area that may slip our minds when it comes to cleaning has to do with our bathroom. Now we're all probably pretty good about cleaning our toilet, our sink, our shower and tub. Those really aren't the problem areas in the bathroom. You see, those areas get attention due to our weekly cleaning routines. It's areas like our wall decor that may not get wiped off every time. It's not very glamorous to think about, but remember, every time we flush, airborne bacteria goes throughout the bathroom. So we've got to make sure we get every surface, especially those areas or items that are closest to the toilet. Well, tidy uppers, that's it for today. Spring cleaning has officially sprung in this home. Now, do I have a lot of spring cleaning projects left to do bigger things? Sure I do, but today was a really good start. Gives me that little boost, a little pat on the back that I've done something. Now, I think sometimes we think that spring cleaning has to be this big monumental, like I work three days straight, eight hours a day on my hands and knees cleaning for it to be considered spring cleaning. Well, in my mind, what spring cleaning is, it's going a little bit beyond, going a bit above what we normally do in our daily cleaning routines. And that's what I did today. I don't normally deep clean my appliances or my coffee pots. I don't normally wipe my light switches off every single time I leave a room, but today I did. So I'll take the small victories anytime. I appreciate you guys joining me today. I hope you feel encouraged. I hope you know that you don't have to do it all in one day or two days or three days. We're just gonna take small bites out of this and we'll get to the finish line together. I appreciate you guys supporting my channel, Tidy Uppers that come back week after week. You know I love you. And if you're new here, thanks for joining me today. I hope you found a place that you could call your own and you'll come back and join us again. So that's all. And until I see you next time, Stay tidy.